Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've made some adjustments to the Small Rockets pack and RP2000 itself. RP2000 is a very minor thing. I just moved an antenna called Interplanetary Calm Dish Alpha from Space Exploration to Electrics because technically our antennas should be down here uh, in Electrics and then uh, through Unmanned Tech. You can see all the ComSat little icons there. Well, some of them end up in automation here. But anyway, the point is they should be down here and not in the space exploration pod area. So yeah, that's down here. And it should provide better comms than the small dish that is CubeSat size that expands. And that might help with interplanetary missions. But I haven't tried it out yet, so I'll have to try it out to make sure it does really have any benefit at all. Uh, I also adjusted the CubeSat solar panels, which were hiding. Uh, they were in structural because they were part of the uh, supplementary panels for the CubeSats. They should be in electrics, and so I moved them into electrics, and so now they're visible. So we always had these solar panels available. We didn't always have to use those CubeSats. I haven't adjusted the wattage on them yet. I'll have to do that. I think they're a little bit OP. That's from the Small Rockets pack. The CubeSat ones uh, is part of the Small Rockets pack. I also adjusted the plumes in the Small Rockets pack and probably some other adjustment that's slipping in my mind. Now, if you are updating the Small Rockets pack or RP2000, keep in mind the folder structure. So the update to the Small Rockets pack will be 0.9.2 and the folder structure that you ha should have in game data uh, the game data folder should be there, and then there's an EDV mods folder, and then uh, RP2000 folder. Those are my folders, and then there's all the other mods. Uh, in the EDB mods folder, there should be a parts folder, and inside the parts folder is the small rockets folder. Uh, if you've got the sheer strut engine pack and the uh, crew vessel pack, those two are also inside the parts folder inside EDB mods. If they're not in the right location, you will get errors. Uh, somebody was concerned about a tweak scale error. That's usually because you have a duplicate of a part or the part is not in the right place. Uh, RP2000 is outside of the EDB mods folder. It's its own folder. And so that's floating around in game data as well. But otherwise, my own part mods are all in the EDB mods slash parts folder. And sometimes the EDB mods folder has other folders in it except for parts like spaces because there's the interiors of the pods and stuff like that so but the main part of the mod is always inside the parts folder inside the edb mods folder so keep in mind the folder structure when you're unzipping the mods otherwise you will have problems the zip file comes with the correct folder structure in it and so if you just make sure to uh, unzip that properly it should end up correct Okay, so as far as contracts are concerned, we're either going to go for crude stuff or we're going to go for more interplanetary satellites and we don't have the crude pods yet. So uh, maybe we should just put some satellites around the moon actually, because we've got two of these here. They're not exactly in the orbits that I would like, but hey, commsats around the moon are commsats around the moon, right? So, whoops. So yeah, let's uh, pick those up and send them over. Maybe we can do both at the same time, which would be fancy. I swear I tried to change the geostationary to geostationary. That's actually geostationary orbit for once. Um, full stationary orbit directly above Munvin Spire. Well, obviously we don't have Munvin Spire, but uh, I'm going to pick that up. I wonder what Munvin Spire is. But uh, yeah, I'll pick that up because we could always do with another geostationary satellite anyway. And that's the actual numbers for a geostationary satellite, so that's good. But let's try for commsats around the moon first. I'm sure those will become important. So now that I've figured out where the solar panels were hiding, uh, they were again in structural instead of in electrics, I can finally use the modern control core, which I was intending on doing. And we can have the soul panels on it, but, well, I guess having them poking out won't be too bad. Let's just have a bunch of them. I mean, I think I'll just have it like that, uh, but we'll probably cover up the blind spot on top with an extra one. 
I'm thinking these are so small that it's not gonna unbalance us too much. I'll just use this relay antenna one. Because we're gonna have one on one side. Maybe we'll have a scientific instrument on the other side. So this has to be S-band, and it is. Other than that, it should be fine for the moon already. Yep. It could be X-band. We could give it X-band. Okay, yeah. X-band, yeah, 2.7 kilobits. Hopefully it's not too expensive. No, yeah, I want to stack these, though. So we want two of them. We got a Science Junior here now. We haven't done any of that. These are going into polar orbits around the moon, so it might be helpful to actually have the accelerometer. So we'll have that opposite the antenna. Okay, well I'm temporarily going to put another one here, root to that, and then copy this. Maybe that'll be okay. Alright, re-root to that one. Okay, so that's two satellites, hopefully capable of reaching these two specific orbits around the moon. We've got a lot of RCS thrusters that could potentially fail. <laughs> okay, Serenity C for comms. Alright, let's build one of these and see if that works out or if I've forgotten something critical. The tracking station upgrade doesn't seem to have given us uh, ground station level 1, so I'm gonna have to look into why that is with real antennae. Um, yeah, because we've got that finished, but still inside it's reading ground station level 0. For now it's not critical because of the other changes that I've made, because we have expand with the tracking station even at level 0 because we're starting in the year 2000, but be nice to get the other bands available, and right now we can't. Uh, unfortunately, I started time warping for electric since I was just trying to roll this out, but then electric started time warping very, very quickly, in fact. So we are launching a little bit later than I intended. The time available for these position a satellite in a specific orbit of the moon is quite long. <laughs> we I want to tighten those up on the contracts there. Okay, I thought I had my mic chip windows. Uh, getting close to nighttime here. And it's nighttime. Okay, we do have SAS now. SAS on. Throttle up. Uh, my physical throttle isn't working. Okay. Throttle up like that. And ignition. And launch. Plume has somewhat changed for these, I think. These Reaver ones. Not perfect, I know waterfall, 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 but uh, for now, we'll keep it to this. With the real plumes. Alright, looking good. I should just turn two of the engines off at this point, just to limit the G-force. Okay, separation and ignition of this little engine. This is the SE-2006. Its plume could be moved a little bit further up. Again, I haven't touched the uh, sure start engines yet, so... A little bit of a staging problem here. Alright, staging. Bearings off. This rocket can certainly carry this payload to orbit, no problems. Okay, I've extended the S-band antennas. I thought we had enough, but it doesn't seem... I think we'll end up a little bit short. I must have done my math a little bit wrong there. Uh, but that's fine, we want to deal with this stage anyway. We're not actually using all the little CubeSat panels. We've got a bunch of them as solar panels, though. So maybe that's making the Delta V reading more wrong than usual, because I have so many of the little... Uh, CubeSat solar panels. Especially the smaller ones that we put on top. Those six on each one. 
so the Delta V inaccuracies will be even worse for the next stages. Okay, we are deorbiting that. I guess these are looking all right now. These are sure strut engines though, not small rockets. I did start working on the sure strut engines. Okay, that is orbit. We apparently have enough to get to the moon, but again, because I've slapped so many of the little solar panels on and they have less than one kilogram, that Delta V reading's wrong. Yeah, if I try to get there faster, it doesn't want to show me the approach. It's got a start burn that's already passed. There's only an eight minute stage, so it shouldn't have already passed. Well, the plumes are better than they were before. There's at least that. Okay, it looks like we might actually have enough in this stage for this burn. Still ends up being a little bit less than it said we would have, but better than I thought we were going to have. Or maybe a little bit less now. <laughs> but the RCS, oh, I guess we don't have any downward facing RCS. Oh well. Okay, we ended up short after all. Okay, but um, shall we have the bottom satellite do the rest? I guess. That'll leave it a little bit short for its own purposes, but it's probably the best bet. Okay, we'll just get a minimum here. Probably we don't have to capture really close to the moon, but maybe we'll start off with that. Okay. They actually have to be a little bit further up. And add an inclination. So we need to separate them off because they need to be at different longitude of sending nodes and they're both polar or actually a little bit retrograde. I'll wait a little bit and we'll have to watch the electric charge because we're on the nighttime side. Oh, there we go, we've charged up. But yeah, let's wait for separation until over here somewhere. Okay, separating the two off. Okay. Now... Ah, oh, this isn't too bad. 1,000... Well, it's probably lying, though. <laughs> okay. Well, that's easier. This one's harder. So we'll try to get into that one with this. This has a little bit of extra fuel, so... We'll try to get into the harder one with this. I think I'll just capture loosely initially. So high up over the moon. All right, that might be a better plan right there. Still fairly mild on capture, and then we have to do the correction and everything, but let's do these two things first. But before I focus on that. We'll add this one's alarm, but go to the other one, this one, and do a maneuver node with this. Uh, for this one, that, that green orbit doesn't look particularly easier. This might even be the harder one. Well, initial assessment of the situations has not panned out. We've got the harder one with this one. Okay, okay, no, 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 don't, 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 ah, stop. All right, we'll figure, we'll probably have to fix that, but we'll figure that out later. Alarm. Okay. Jump to the other one. Okay. And add that alarm. Though, again, we'll have to adjust that. But in theory, they're in a better situation. We'll follow this one in, because that has to do a maneuver when it gets into Lunar SOI. Okay, I've encountered a strange problem. Uh, we're out of power, and therefore out of comms as well, but I don't see why that should be. 
modern control core. The control core itself had a short circuit and therefore its battery is dead. Oh, wait. Oh, I think... I think oh scrap locked the battery here. And that's its way of saying that its battery is dead. Well, I guess we have to have backup batteries. Instead of just having the one in the control core. I think that's what happened, yeah. Well... I guess that's that. Um, yeah. Okay, we've lost one. <laughs> uh, well, hmm. backup batteries is not necessarily a wrong thing to do. So, I guess I guess that can happen. I guess we'll just say that that's a thing that can happen. All right, we lost that one. Again, you guys can decide not to use O-Scrap, and maybe that would be a better thing. That's that's entirely up to you. O-Scrap is not required. Okay, we're focusing on this one and hoping, hoping that its control cord does not have a battery short circuit. Doing both of them at once would have been nice, though. That still looks like a fine maneuver for us. Alright, there's the moon. Well, apparently we haven't done the gravity scan over the Midlands before. But our only recover scientific data contract is for the surface of the moon, not up here. But still we get the science, so that's okay. Alright, should be close enough, ignition. Okay, we have a capture and we might as well keep it loose so that we can tilt our orbit properly. Okay, well that's looking pretty close, but not exact. That's just to correct the inclination with it. Okay, high up over the moon, ignition. Okay, and shut down. And finally we'll just bring the orbit down. I don't know if that's accurate enough for the contract, but it should be. So, just like that, 500, we should have it. We should have it. Alright. Not too high up, but high up enough that it should have a good view of things and many satellites could connect to it. Okay, uh, we are not close enough. Oh, now we're close enough. Okay. Still pretty far off, actually, but let's not talk about it. Uh, maintain stability for 10 seconds, and we should be done with this one. Okay. So we got one done, but I really wanted to get two done, but oh scrap got me. Uh, we'll have to slap some extra batteries on these sorts of things. But okay, and it's got a communication line back. It should be able to help out with UHF missions. Though, I did only put a 30 decibel meter... Uh, I'm sorry, decibel milliwatt comm unit on it. Re really, we should probably put 40. But we'll see if that's okay. Maybe I should stop using UHF with these. Um, but it is more convenient, I think. Alright, anyway. Uh, for now, it's satisfied. That's the important part. Uh, I think we'll try to do the geostationary one quickly. Uh, I feel guilty about only getting one done, so... Let's try geostationary orbit. I don't want to do the other moon one just yet, since we already tried it once. Okay, so we don't need two. We probably want a bigger engine because we got to put more delta V in here. So we'll put the KH, the one kilonewton KH, which is hypergolic by propellant. And yeah, uh, this time this will have be a 40. And we'll have additional batteries. Okay, so basically after launch we have like 6,000 meters per second here. So it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. Well, Serenity G for geostationary. We will be done with electrics. Maybe we should put the better antenna on, but that's not necessary for one of these. These are just supporting low Earth orbit missions. Or missions in low Earth orbit, I should say. 
Now in this case, we do have to be stationary over a particular location. So I'll have to keep that in mind. We may have to, may have to make some minor adjustments for that. Okay, let's see how it goes. In this case, we're just getting equatorial, so we don't especially care. Oh, Munvin Spire is like right where we would cross the equator anyway, so... Um, hmm, we won't actually be over... Uh, yeah, that's interesting as far as timing is concerned, but okay. Um, yeah, we can work with that. Alright, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. All right, staging, bearings, all right, about to make orbit here, but we'll let the stage deorbit of course, operation and ignition, and shut down for now, that's plenty of delta V left in theory. So, yeah, something like that is going to happen. Okay, well, we're probably late. Adjustments will be made. Okay. Ignition. Oh, we're passing right by the little marker there. Okay, that's about right on the apoapsis. So we'll end up getting into a sort of standby orbit. Almost at geosynchronous orbit, but not quite. So that we can wait for the target location to be under us. Our uh, inclination will have to be close to zero though. We'll have to see. We may have to make many adjustments, but we, in theory, have the Delta V for it. But how many times have I said that before? Okay, let's see. Currently, we would not be directly over it, very clearly. Okay, that's that one. And staging and ignition. Okay, so that leads us two hours shy of geosynchronous orbit and timing and our inclination is below one degree that should be okay for these contracts uh, so we will wait until we're we are over Munvin spire which is currently over there it may take some time okay this looks pretty much over it at least it's within our cone I don't know if it's like gonna like it enough, but we'll try it. We'll use the downward facing RCS thrusters to finish this up. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that because we're missing one. But then again, the main thruster might be too par- well, it should be about right. Okay, is it happy with that? Okay, no, uh, no, it's not happy with that. Directly above Munvin Spire, it is not happy with. Okay, trying to make finicky adjustments so that we're over Munvin Spire. The main engine has limited ignitions actually. It's got 34 left though, so it should be alright. Contract complete. Oh, it, it accepts this as Kyo Stationary Orbit. It's fine. It's happy now. Um, let's try and round it out a little bit better though. Okay, so contract fulfilled, but let's make it a little bit more geostationary. But it's still not going to be precise. Especially since I'm turning to get better solar coverage. So we're definitely we're like a minute off even. Alright, so... Well, we've done one satellite around the moon and one geostationary satellite. I tried for two around the moon, but oh scrap got me. But with that, I think we'll go away from commsats and we'll try to do other things next time. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
and I'll see you next time.